Hello everyone. Today I have with me problem 3.2, 3.20 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. Firefighters use a high pressure hose to shoot a stream of water at a burning building. The water has a speed of 25 meters per second as it leaves the end of the hose and then exhibits projectile motion. The firefighters adjust the angle of elevation A of the hose. Okay, that's supposed to be alpha but I'm just going to, okay. Alpha of the hose until the water takes 3.00 seconds to reach a building 45 meters away. Ignore air resistance. Assume that the end of the hose is at ground level. A, find alpha. And B, find the speed and acceleration of the water at the highest point in its trajectory. C, how high above the water does the water strike the building and how fast is it moving just before it hits the building okay so okay so what we can do is we can start with a diagram and just understand some of the information that they gave us so we know that this water has a speed of 25 meters per second as it leaves the hose and it exhibits projectile motion so if we start right over here, if this is kind of just the tip of the hose, it's going to be at an angle of alpha, and it's going to experience some sort of projectile motion, just like that. And this is going to be 25 meters per second. Okay, and it says that it takes three seconds to reach a building that's for 45 meters away. So let's just assume that the building is like right over here. And if we're given um information that's contradictory, sorry. And if we're given information that's contradictory, we can go ahead and change that. Sorry, my throat's a little bit um strange this morning. I might have to pause periodically and just clear my throat every now and then. Okay. So this building is 45 meters high. And it takes about three seconds to get from this point all the way to reach the building that's 45 meters away. And <clears throat> we wanna assume that the end of the hose is at ground level. And you want to find what alpha is. So yeah, this is ground level. So we're not like on top of a surface because another option would be for like maybe on a cliff or like some sort of like another building and we're shooting to this other building right over here. So no, actually we're on the ground just like I drew in the original image. And then B, find the speed and acceleration of the water at the highest point in its trajectory. And then C, how high above the ground does the water strike the building? And how fast is it moving right? Um, how fast is it moving just before it hits the building? So if we want to start with problem B, just because this is actually just a super easy problem, but actually before we even go ahead and do any of that, I'm just going to go ahead and write down all of our knowns. So because we're at, we're asked for so many different things, it would just be really great if we could organize what we know and what we don't know. So for why, we can have, remember that in projectile motion, I covered this in, la in the last video too, but it goes like, we're starting from some point on the ground, we're going all the way up to some point until the final speed is zero, we're going to be turning, and then going back down and picking up speed again. And it can either go all the way down, but we know that in this case, it's um it's on top of some sort of building. So actually just gonna stop at some point right over here, for example. But we also know that there is some sort of speed in the X direction and it goes this way, right? So that's going to be VX, um, but there's basically these almost like two or three components. I mean, two dimensions, but we can break this down into three movements. So it's up, down and sideways. Right, so for the Y, let's go ahead and just write down what we know. 
So we don't know what alpha is. So that's what we're trying to figure out. We know what VI is. We know what VI is kind of, right? So VI Y is going to be equal to, um, it's going to be equal to 25 sine alpha, right? Because we want this component right over here. Um, we don't know how much. So right now I'm going to do from here all the way to the top. And let's just call this one. Let's call this two. And let's call this three. So for one, we know that it's going all the way to the top. Um, that means VF Y, right? For one, it's going to be equal to zero. Um, time, we don't actually know what time it is, but it's going to be some time time one and then time one plus time two we know that's going to be equal to three seconds acceleration that's going to be due to gravity so negative 9.8 meters per second squared and then for part two we have we start with some speed in the air right? so at this top we know that v i y two is going to be equal to zero meters per second. And we also know that we're trying to figure out what um, the final speed is. So we don't actually know that. So we don't know what the FY2 is, no idea. And then for T, we know that it's going to be T2. And then what else? We know that acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And, oh, in distance, right? So that's also what we're trying to figure out. So this distance it travels, and we also don't know what distance this is. And then for the x, so for three, right? So this is going to be x. We know that this is not, this doesn't have any acceleration component in any projectile. There is no acceleration component, right? So there's no acceleration component. This is just going to be a simple speed equation. So it's going to be dx is equal to vx times t. So t, we actually know that that's going to be 3.00 seconds. vx, we know is going to be 25 cos alpha, right? Because we want this component. And then we know that this is 45 meters away. So, so we know that dx is equal to 45 meters. Okay, so um, I know I said we'll do part B, but just because I have everything written out, we can just go in order and, um, yeah, we can just go in order. Okay, so for part A, we want to find out what alpha is. And if we can take a look right over here, here we have... Um, kind of two or three pieces of information missing. So we can't really use any of our kinematic equations. Similar here, we don't really have too much information, but right here, if you look, we can just use our simple speed equation because the only thing missing in the X in um, the X component is really just the angle. So we have our time, we have our distance and we almost have our speed, we just need our angle. So to do that, all we really need to do is isolate for alpha. So we have dx is equal to vx t. And then we have 45 divided by t is equal to vx. So we know that vx is equal to 15 meters per second, right? Because we have meters here, seconds here. And so we know that 15 meters per second is equal to 25 cos alpha. Okay. We have 25 cos alpha. And then when I solve for this, you can do inverse cos, you can do 15 over 25 and then cos inverse that. And you get alpha is equal to 53.13 degrees. So that's our answer for alpha. So we can actually just write that over here. I am going to write that in a different color. So we have right over here, and we can do alpha 
is equal to 53.13 degrees. Okay, and now I'm just going to erase this and now we're gonna do part B. Okay, so in part B, we wanna find out what the speed and acceleration of the water is at the highest point in its trajectory. So in projectile motion, we want so we want to find out what is the speed and acceleration right over here or right over here, right? So we know that automatically acceleration is super easy. It's just going to be, as long as we're on planet Earth, it's just going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. That's not going to change at all. That's just acceleration. Um, that's a given, right? Because we have it right here and we have it right here. It's not really changing as we get to the top. It's not gonna turn into a different acceleration. As long as we're on earth, it's going to be the same. Okay, so, or approximately the same, I should say, because that's a story for another day. Okay, so now we wanna find out what the speed is. So for speed, remember we have two components of speed. We have V, Y, and V, X. So at the top, we know that Vy is going to be zero, right? Because zero is going to actually change because at the top, it's going to, you know, deaccelerate, um, change direction, and then accelerate back down. But while it's changing direction, it's going to be zero meters per second at the top. Vx, on the other hand, we know that that's just constantly going to be this speed right over here. So it's just going to be 25 cos um 53.13 because we know that that's not going to change and we actually solved for that like a couple minutes ago we said it was 15 meters per second that's not going to change because acceleration because we're not accelerating in the x component we're just accelerating in the y component and so if we um you can use uh you know this method uh to figure out what this is so it's going to be vx squared plus vy squared but we already know that you know we have zero right over here. So V at the top is just going to be 15 meters per second um, in whichever direction, right? So it's we're actually just looking for speed. We're not looking for acceleration, uh, sorry, velocity. So we don't really need a direction. So it's at the top, it's just gonna be 15 meters per second. So there we have our part B. So our, our acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared right? That's your answer. And then our speed at the top is 15 meters per second. And then um, how high, and then now for part C, so we don't even need to read, write this down because this is kind of all pretty much given. Um, but then for part C, you need to solve for that. And for part C, it says, how high above the ground does the water strike the building? And how fast is it moving just before it hits the building? So for Y, what we're looking for is D, right? So the height of the building. And we're also looking for VF. So there are two ways to do this. Um, there's the quick and easy way. And then there's the long, longer way that takes a little more thought. So I'm obviously going to do the quick and easy way. So for if we want to find the height of the building, so let's say that's H, right? So we have our, so we're looking for our distance, right? And we have our VIY, we have our acceleration, and then we have our time, right? So we have what time it's going to be. So what we just really need to do is plug that in and use one of our five kinematic equations. So we have V, I, Y, T, and A, and we're looking for D. So really, it's just going to be V, I, T plus half of A, T squared. And we're just going to plug in our values. So we get V, I, Y, we get 25 sine 53.13 times 3 plus half of negative 9.8 times 3 squared. And for H, what I'm getting is 
I'm getting that the building is 15.9 meters. That's the height of the building right over here. Okay, so now for VF, again, we can use like the information that we're given. So we have our time again, we have A and we have our VI. So we can just use this equation, VF is equal to VI plus AT. Um, I don't have space, I'm not gonna plug in the values, but again, it's just, you take the values and you plug them in where they belong. And the value that I'm getting is minus 9.4 meters per second. And that makes sense because we're kind of going downwards. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be minus 9.4 meters per second um, for our VF. And then this is going to be our distance, 15.9 meters. That's how, sorry, that's how the height of the building. And how fast is moving right before it hits the building? Minus 9.4 meters per second. So there we have it, part A, B, and C. Excuse me for my voice today. I don't know why it just started doing this this morning. Yeah, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. And um, I hope this was really helpful. And if it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, you can always email me with your suggestions and all I can do problems that um, you would like me to do. So um, I would love to do that. Just shoot me an email or leave it in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.